Yo, what's up guys, Rico here, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to 3D motion track inside of After Effects, Buju and Cinema 4D. So, the first step is to open up After Effects, or Sony Vegas, whatever you prefer. Because um, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be rendering our cinematic as a JPEG sequence to begin with. So, yeah, so I've got my cinematic here. Um, yours will be a video, or like an MP4 or something, but I don't have mine anymore. So I'm just using my JPEG sequence and I'm going to render this as a JPEG sequence just to, show, just to show you guys. So go up to composition as the render here. Change the output module, click on lossless and format JPEG. And just click OK and then output to. Um, I'll show you my little setup real quick. I've got um, a motion track folder for like my edit I'm working on so I've got folder and then inside the folder I've got JPEG sequence, PNG sequence and down there will be the Cinema 4D file. So inside JPEG sequence just click uh, save and then click render and wait for those render out and I'll meet you guys in Buju. Okay so once you're in Buju what we're going to do from here we're going to go over to toolbox and click import sequence and I just like click can click and cancel on that and change the frame rate first to 30 and then we go to browse and look for your motion track folder so here's all mine just click open just click on the first frame then click open then it'll show the last frame here click apply and click close so now as you can see we're going to scrub through and now click track features go to advanced and put it to the very end the sensitivity and then click start and wait for this to finish okay so once this is done we need to go to camera solve click start and this shouldn't take that long Okay, so that's done, and your little uh, your little crosses should be turned into circles that are red and yellow. I mean, blue and yellow. And um, as you can see, whenever they are hidden, they turn blue, and whenever they're like visible, they're yellow. I believe. And now we're gonna go to um, scene geometry, and this is a sort of tricky part, but if you get it right, it's good. So click add coordinate from hint change the type to X axes and what we're going to do from here we're going to try and mark out a straight line in the map so click on one click on, click hold control click on another one so as you can see that's a straight line because it's like on a tile so then connect to selected update coordinate frame then add another coordinate from hint change the type to Z and do the same thing but do the other direction so like do the trinomic I don't know so I don't like up and down so I'm going to do it to the side now so it's not always perfect but it still works so once you're done click close and you can add a test object and as you can see that looks okay now I click export camera and go to browse and what we're going to want to do from here is go to our motion track, so motion track folder and change this to cinema 4d and I just call mine C4D and change the scale scene by 1 to 100 and make sure the move type is moving camera static scene click save yes and now we're going to open up Cinema 4D so yeah okay so once we're in Cinema 4D we're um, going to go to file open and go find our motion track folder open our motion track and change the scale to 5 inches so now if we just go to the timeline zoom out and scrub along it should have the same motion as the camera did in the cinematic and as you can see if we go to the end here that was that was the tile that we done the scene geometry on that's like yeah so we're gonna go to create new material double click it go to color Click a little triangle on texture and load image. Go to a JPEG sequence, click on the first one, click open, no, and then 
so like the little picture here go to animation calculate it and now go up here to this floor and go to background and now we want to drag our material onto that and as you can see it moves along it's like animated so yeah now what we want to do we want to go to file merge and get in our lightroom i will leave a free lightroom in the description but i will be using synergy mango's lightroom because it's just it's too good so you can go buy it from yourself by store i'll link that in the description if you would like it's, it's not that dear it's not that expensive it's like three dollars four dollars five dollars i don't know something like that so now what we want to do we want to select all of this and go out of our camera whoa, 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 whoa. Right. i want to scale all this down make sure the lightroom selected as well And now go back onto your camera and move everything. I don't know why this always happens, but my all my tools go really weird sometimes. So obviously it look it looks really bad now, but we have to try and move it go to the spot we want it in. It's gonna go here. I'm gonna make sure the wall is sort of like flat in my my point of view. So there. And try reposition this. I'm gonna actually change the font because this font's just annoying me. text as well. I'm just going to align this to the middle and change the font. I'm also going to change the depth like a no 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 like 120 obviously we're gonna scale the everything down so the depth will get bigger on the side so I think we might nearly be done just have to make sure it looks perfect Um, but as you can see it goes at sort of an angle, so I think that's okay to there. But let's make sure it looks like it's in the spot the whole way around. And it sort of doesn't there. It looks really like, I don't know. So you have to just move it according to the scene until it just all looks perfect. I think that looks okay now. I'm just going to move this to the side a lot. So it's in the middle of that little pathway. And I think I'm going to point it more up. And it's more like this. And obviously I'm going to move that into sort of the middle. And then what we can do from here, we can um, untick this little red circle on the Lightroom and we can just scale it all down until it's the same size as the text so press it just select the Lightroom and scale it down until it just fits the text so as you can see the text is too big now so we can scale this up a little bit more. Move this down. 
So now if we go to the render settings, this is the settings you need to have. So um film and video 720 25 but we can change the frame rate here to 30 and frame range just all frames then save click these three little dots and in my motion track folder my desktop actually go motion track folder and png sequence and just call it i don't know one for like the first motion track change the format to png click alpha channel go to anti-lacing anti-lacing best min level one max level two then go to effects ambient occlusion global illumination and to sort of slow down or speed up the render time you can change it these first two both to medium and yeah, if we give this a render out, it should look really good. As you can see, we actually get some colours on it, like really warm colours, which looks really nice. Obviously, you, um, you can change the actual colour of the text, but I didn't this time. But I would, normally. But as you can see, we've got a black thing at the top, which means um, it's coming out of the Lightroom. So we need to make the Lightroom actually a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to put um, a white material on the text to make it look a little bit better. So we just scale up the Lightroom like that. And new material. And just put that on the text. Oh, never mind. Wait. Where is white on? Let me just take off spike a little make sure that's fully white fully okay and now you give it a render out we should look good so I don't, I don't think we'll be getting that black thing at the top of the text anymore because we scaled up Lightroom but we'll see Okay, so it looks okay. Um, obviously, what I do, I always like mess around with the text, the letters. So, like, what I do is I make it editable and use the rotation tool on all the letters and make it look cool. And yeah, so this is just a basic motion track tutorial. Obviously, this motion track isn't perfect, but I'm actually gonna just sort of reposition mine a little bit. looks all good and then what I do when I'm about to render I delete the background and then from there I just see if it's all straight and then once I'm done I just click render and hit the screen make that full screen and uh, yeah so this has been a motion track tutorial guys it's, it was actually quite highly highly requested on my channel so if you guys enjoyed this make sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you want more tutorials on after effects and stuff like that if you want to see some new Vegas tutorials just make sure to let me know i can do that um so yeah i've been rico peace out